Welcome to the studio. Today we're going to paint this barn. It's the same one I painted before in the tutorial, but it's a different angle. It's a different photograph. Um, as we were driving by, we took a bunch of photos this way, and to behind behind the barn is how the other one is is uh, framed up. Uh, you got to uh, figure out a lot of things here before you even start painting. The mood that you're going to want. Um, and the technique you're going to use to evoke this morning calm and uh, the light, how you're going to paint the light, make sure the, sh the you get your shadows in. There's, there's a hint right here of the, the fog going behind the barn and uh, we're going to try to put that in as well as these layers in here of trees. But the background, you don't want to get too involved in doing that, but we're going to do that it's going to be actually very simple to do and I'll show you how right now. All right, so for the sky, I've pre-wet this paper. It's Beihong 140 pound rough textured paper and I wiped it off just gently with a paper towel like you've seen me before uh, do before many times. So um, we're going to start on this corner here. This is lighter on this side. The sun is coming from right to left, so that's why we're starting over here. I mixed up some cobalt teal blue and some uh, cobalt blue for this sky color here. And we're just going to start coming across like this into here. And we don't want to overwork this at all. So make sure you mix enough paint, enough pigment to get that done. And I'm going to just go right to the more cobalt teal blue here in the brush. Get some more on here. And I want to make sure that I've got enough on the brush here to go all the way across like this here and then down. And then now, because we want this lighter here, you notice I've got a bit of an angle going here. I'm just going to go across with some... A little bit of cat orange, not too much. I'm just going to start this transition here, and this may appear bright to begin with here, but it's all going to blend in nicely like that, and uh, it's just going to mix on the paper. I'm going to clean that brush off, get into a little bit more of this cat orange, and come into my bead with it down here like that, there, and a little bit stronger down on the left side again and I'm going to come right across here and I can go across there. I just don't want to touch the front of the barn with this mixture here as we come down and I'm into trees and grasses here now so we don't really have to be too careful anymore but I'm leaving that. That's, I'm just going to leave that come down and mix on the paper. There's a little bit here, a little bit of extra white that I don't like here. It's going to be okay. We're going to have trees in the background there. And that's about it there. Now down here I do have this little, there's a little pond down here and I'm just going to make it brighter than what I chose in the photo so it reads more like a pond. And there's a little bit, it's right here. I'm just going to drop that blue in there now. And into here too, just figure out where it is. Right about here. I'm just going to paint its shape in here like that and come across like that there and into there and we're going to have some grasses and things in there and that's actually about all we're going to do. I know that it's over to the right here in the painting but I put a little put it over here like that like that there. Yeah I wanted to move that over because I didn't want it to draw your eye to leave the painting in that area and then where the fog is down here all we got to do is get a clean brush and we just we just wet it and then that's going to blend make sure we don't have any hard lines anywhere just water and I can come up here a little bit here too and blend this it's an almost with this rough textured paper, super easy to do some bright dry brushing on it and that's kind of the effect that we get there. Now right here you can see the blue from the sky into here. I'm just going to add some water and what's going to do, it's going to thin that blue and separate it and it's going to be, become our fog. So it's wet, let it do its thing, it'll just paint itself. Now up a little bit higher uh, also we got some fog into here. so. Again, water. Water's all you need. And you can see it separating already there, like that. 
and it goes right up to this area here in the barn so we're going to go ahead and drop water in there and there we go so then when we add the trees into that still wet area of fog it's just going to blend really nicely so in this area here where the fog is too you can kind of notice the fog has just a little bit of a hint of morning light into it this is a little bit of orange and we're going to put that in there kind of just like that there and over here it's kind of bluish but I still got a little bit on the brush here and it's just going to be I think it's going to be just enough just to change the tone of it a little bit and we can come down a little bit lower into this area here and let that blend and that should be good. We can also go in there with either a brush. Actually a brush is better than a paper towel. I'm just drying off this brush here like this. And you can tell it's losing its shape because it's so dry. And come across here and just pick up a little pigment. And because it's got bands in it, right? And as this dries, it's going to let you do it more. If you do it when it's too wet, it's going to close in those bright lines that you're making with your brush there as you pick up pigment and it's also going to thin the other colors that you have around it making them lighter so that's about it there you don't need to do too much and just stand back and have a look at it we've got a really beautiful cloud going into here just some low fog we get that bright blue that's a mixture of cobalt blue and cobalt teal blue and uh, it's turning out as planned so far so the next step is going to be to put these trees in here before it's too dry and I've, I've mixed up some white with some green that I had left over on my palette so I can't really tell you what color it is exactly but it looks a little bit too green I'm gonna add a little bit of blue to it just to push it back there and you'll see the color when I drop it in here remember everything dries lighter lighter later so let's go we're going to go I'm going a little bit low here you'll notice and I'm just testing the tone of this color here that's going to dry quite light quite a bit lighter like I said there and I'm just looking at it now and I'm watching how much it crawls up as well so I'm going to put, try to put the brakes on it here. I'll see how wet this paper is. I can see my little preliminary drawing line behind it and it's behaving. It's staying where it's at and it's just blending slightly. So we're going to make the top layer of our trees here. And remember we can lighten this up by just either picking it up pigment with a, with a brush, dry brush or just just uh, blot it with a paper towel. Now we can go down into here even more. Really don't have to be too careful as we come down. Just the top is the important part right here now. And just like that. Now this is one layer and th these trees here are closer than these trees there. I think you can see this part of the painting or this part of the photograph here. So that, that's about the density that I want there. So then I'm gonna pick up darker pigment and I'm going to start with this more forward layer here and you'll see what will happen right away. I purposefully left it here because I'm letting that dry a little bit. I left this little bit of a gap. I don't want to blend it quite yet. And I'm going to come across here and I'm going to paint some of these trees. And you just keep going just all the way across to the other side here. We can start over here too where we want. You can pick your height that you want and it comes out about here and it comes a little bit lower here. Need a little bit more pigment. It last quite a bit of pigment on that brush. It was nice. And into here and I'm just painting these little trees. So the tip of the brush is making the tops of the trees here quite nicely you just make them evenly uneven and then it goes up a little bit here like that there and I can bring this down and now we're just having a look at where the bottom of this fog is so it's going to be about here so I'm going to go ahead and paint that in right there just like that there but you got to remember too 
blend that in with some water. And I'm going to be in a little bit of a hurry here as I drop in some more colors into here. And I can go a little bit darker again. A little undersea green I'm mixing up with this here like that. And we'll go ahead and now's the time I can paint over top of this. And it'll bring this forward nicely here into this area and also blend. I'm going to get rid of all these little white highlights. I don't want them in this case. So just like that there. And now I can come across like this and paint the rest of these trees. Cut around your roof. And up into here and there. There's just something about painting around barn roofs. That's so much fun. You just see them take shape. It's very interesting. And be careful when you're going around there, that's all. And then you want to take this down, the fog's coming to about there, so I want to take it down all the way down here. And a little bit below this roof line here, like that. Pick up some more pigment. A little bit darker, darker again here. And I'm going to drop some trees in here. There's a row down here that's kind of sticking up. Even though this is a small painting, you need a fair bit of pigment to get this done. So I've got a hard line there, but that's okay. The paper's still damp. And that's where I'm going to blend that fog here. And this is still damp there too. A little bit of dark in here. I'm picking up a little bit of neutral gray kind of stuff in here. Give it a little bit more detail. Remember, this is going to dry lighter. It's nice to have contrast between your roof and the background. Very important. And then into here, we've got another tree line. In here, poking up above the fog. Trying to get, not get my hand in the way so you can see what's happening here. And about there, just like that. And I'm going to go just slightly darker into here. Get a little bit more definition between those. And I'm already, I'm, I'm thinking about how dry this line is getting down here. So I'm going to get, so I'm going to get going with that. And I quite like what this is doing here. Get rid of those little white bits. In this case, I don't want them. A lot of times I leave them in because I want the little highlights. And, and that's looking a lot like trees. Okay, so down here. We're going to see how much pigment we have with just a damp brush and with just a little bit of water on this brush. And I can see actually I'm going to pick up this pigment that's pooling here now. I'm going to pick it up. Dry brush. It's not dry brushing. It's just picking up pigment with a dry brush and then squeezing it out on my paper towel here like that. So that's what I want to do. This is where the transition of the fog is going to be. So. In a little bit of a hurry here and I'm going to pick up a little bit of cobalt teal blue and some water here and I'm going to blend that in right there just like that and a little water a little more cobalt teal blue and into there like that just water and then now just clean water, nothing else, no other pigment, just clean water and come across just like that. And just blend that in down into your fog area. That's a little bit too much over here, so what we can do is just add some more water, just clean water. And make our fog and we can pick it up and that's looking good right here. And then the other part of the fog, the lower part of the fog, is going to be your green of your field. So you can leave that in. You can even just, you can change the tone of that a little bit. Just pick up a little color wherever in your palette that you like. And you can warm it up a little bit. Different bands of fog while it's still wet in there. I don't clean my palette really too often. I just make nice grays out of what's there and, and, uh, and I use these colors that are in there. You can find the exact color that you want in your palette. Like that there and it's, it's kind of blend it a little bit here. 
kind of like the waves in the last painting there. And you can go in with a, your paper towel and make highlights and things in the background trees and uh, whatnot, but it's uh, it's not needed in this case. We've got just some fog and a nice calm morning there. All right, so I'm going to let that dry and then we'll continue. So one thing I wanted to show you, I touched a little bit uh, on that subject in the last painting there, and that's creating some interest by by making little highlights. And this is just cad orange. I'm just going to put a little bit on here. And just like the sun is just shining, just coming up on that band of trees there. And I can put a little bit more in the here. And don't do a whole lot. You could just do a little glow like that. And it, it's just going to make a difference in the detail of your painting. All right, so as this is drying, I'll give you a little trick here on uh, figuring out your, your tonal differences here. Now, if you grab your uh, photograph that you're painting and you squint your eyes, it really helps you let, uh, see the, the tonal value differences. You can see the barn here is really dark. The windows are a little bit, the or window openings are a little darker. These shadows are very, very dark back here. These uh, fence posts, very dark. And so the foreground has darker bands in it. I think I'm going to splatter into that some dark color to get that done. Uh, a little bit of quinacridone gold in with this middle ground green, a little bit more intense color there. And then the lightest greens are in this back area in here. And you can see all that when you're squinting your eyes. So plan the next step and I'll show you how to do it right now. So the first thing we're going to do is um, mix a little bit of green and we want a little bit of titanium white in with the green and that'll, that'll uh, lighten the color a little bit for the distance there. I don't normally tend to test colors on a side piece of paper. Sometimes I do if I'm trying to get an exact color match, but in this case we don't need to do that. We're just gonna just check it out on the paper. I've got a lot of pigment on this brush here and that's the key here too. Have, don't run out of pigment. So it looks really dark here and that's because the pigment is really thick. So I'm going to kind of go around this fence here. I don't really have to because I can paint it in later. And it kind of, a little bit of that feel comes up here and gets right across like that. So you can see where it's thinner already. It's a lot lighter because I mixed in that, that titanium white with it. So I'm going to grab the pigment I dropped on the paper there and come into here. Now I'm going to have a look at it. We can squint our eyes again. And so we know right away That we need to blend that little top line into there. So we'll grab a brush that's damp, not wet, just damp. You got some water, I shake it off. You can feel how wet it is on your palm of your hand. And we're going to come across here and just soften that edge at the top a little bit. Let that blend into the fog there. So as you see the transition, it's lightest on this side, darker over here, and we've achieved that right there with our with our blending. Blend that a little more there. Okay, and that's done. And make sure you rinse it off because you'll pick up a little bit of green. And you don't want, sometimes you don't want that in your next step there. So this is our background here. It's darker in this area here because these are kind of shadows below these. Uh, there's hay bales and there's some piece of farm equipment down here. So I'm going to go ahead and paint a little bit into here like that. Now you can leave some of these little sparkles, these little highlights if you want. And I'll go down here right off the page like that without painting your iPad. Too much anyway. There we go. Okay, so then we're going to have a look at this here. There's some light areas here. And I'm just going to put in a little bit of interesting color in here from my palette. And again, I see that same color over here. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that in there. And a little green in between them. A little bit more intense green now. And I'm going to leave that little pond there, frame it up a little bit, and go into this area here. Now a little bit more. I can't tell you what the color this is because, it's, again, it's, it's just a mix in the palette that's left over from other paintings. So. Uh, but it's working nice in this case, so I'm going to stick some in there and paint that fence in now. 
into here in this color and I can drop in darker colors because it's in shadow there and sometimes I erase these little pencil marks here once I have and just and just leave enough so I know where things are but in this case I want the graphite to show through and there's nothing wrong with that they're all part of the painting and making details like that and go to the front of the bar there like that so I purposefully um, framing in the barn here like that that's a uh, green oxide I think that color there and I'm gonna run that just with some clean water back into here and I'm gonna blend it later I'm gonna leave a little bit of a water bead in there like that and that'll help us a little bit brighter grass there you don't have to put that in you can paint whatever green you want but I quite like the look of the photograph so I put it in there so but the only thing you're gonna have to do though is get the hair off your brush and uh, you know blend that in make sure it makes sense with the rest of what you're doing here so put in a little bit more color and I kind of like that all the way across here and tie it into this area a little bit just like that there okay so the next green you're gonna want to drop into here and I got some green gold because I want to change the green here into the middle ground greens so this is no I don't have anything added to this green I'm just gonna drop it in like that carefully going around my water little pond here drop a little bit here tie it in leave your little highlights and just let that blend on the paper just like that and into your pond you can put some little darks on the edge later and it's kind of painting itself where the the pigment is pooling here I'm going to help it with a little green here and a little bit darker green and that's going to because of the angle of the table it's going to pool right at the bottom here right on the edge of this little pond here and there's a little bit here it's lighter I'm getting pretty fussy with the details here but the painting like this it kind of needs it you see that drop D drop right in my pond but you know what that's okay we can grab a paper towel and we just blot it once and it's gone so panic not and into here like that Wouldn't that going that way just a little bit into this pond but not right there there we go okay so now we've got this to deal with over here we want a little bit more green into here this again this is another green it's a little bit darker and I'm going to come into this side with it I think this is green appetite genuine something like that or no serpentine green that's what this is I used to use it a lot and uh, then I found green gold but I really like this color still here serpentine so my brush is getting it's a little bit small for doing that kind of detail in here what I'm going to do I'm just going to just put a little water in here and buy me some time because I want to work on this area over here and I need a bigger brush to do it um, this guy here and it's lighter it's got a little brown in it so I'm going to put in this background kind of brown hue into it here like that leave a little highlights to the pond area and where I sprayed my water a little bit more changing the tone of it here I'm going to go across right across like that I know it dried up but it gives you those little highlights so it's nice and yeah, come across here and we're going to finish that off like that and I got some quinacridone burnt orange which I really like that color it's going to help us with these bands that are in here Yeah, 
that, a little bit of conacridone gold. And then I'm going to put our greens over top of this here. So I'm leaving the white and what's going to happen is that these greens are going to shine through the in between those areas into here. Now this I'm going to put some little bands in here, this green, and right at the bottom. That there. And it's a little bit, you can see it crawling up here, it's painting itself. So you can react to that. There's a little lighter area there and we have it here. I'm just going to drop in a little bit of our darks here. So rather than splatter it and have to really be careful of this, this water here, trim up to the bottom like that there. It's actually doing a great job all on its own here. I'm just going to add a little bit here and there and do it this way. All part of reacting to your painting. I'm going to throw a little bit in there and I'm liking what it's doing here. And you can, you know, you can get in here with a rigger brush and paint some little weed, reeds and weeds and cattails and different things. And I'm going to go ahead and paint a little bit in just on the edge. Sometimes I just wet it and let the let the painting paint itself, but you do need, if you got a little bit of detail that you carefully paint in here, it'll make them difference too. Just like things are showing up over the edge. And then the other side here, you can make a little bank by darkening those little shadows. In the bottom, just like that. And so as you see there, you can, you've got this little detail coming up over the edge. And you can come across here and you can do the same on this side here where this white is. And fill in some more of this white here. And a little bit of detail and along the fence post rows you can darken that into here like that. And that'll give us some detail into there just like that. So I'm going to stand back and look at this and figure out what we need to do next here. So the next thing I'm going to do, this is dry sufficiently now, I can just wet my brush. I'm just going to drop in carefully just water. Just splatter a little bit of water in here and I went by there once. One more over here and I'll just let that, that develop. You can see it's separating the colors right away too. You can also splatter color into there but when you're splatting your water on top of your colors it's already on your painting. You don't have to worry about getting it everywhere in the painting except for if you do get it in the sky it may make some spots in there and if you do get it in the sky let it dry completely. Don't try to blot it because it will pick up. It'll make dots all over your sky if you uh, try to pick it up. Next we're going to paint the barn and we have to leave, let's leave the roof and we'll leave this face until, uh, let, actually no, we're going to, we're going to leave the roof and we're going to paint the front face and this together and then we're going to darken the end. So we really don't want much pigment, or, or uh, yeah, we got pretty wet diluted pigment to get that tone that we want into there, that color that we want. And it's better to go lighter on the first pass, that way you know you're not going to go too dark. Although if you do, do uh, make it too dark on the first pass here, go ahead and just blot it with a paper towel and start again. So that's actually not, I actually like that, but I'm going to go a little bit darker because it's lacking a little bit of color. And I'm going to go right into this kind of bottom area here. Now it doesn't really matter if it goes into your green, just don't blot it too much and don't pick it up. But you can pick up the excess pigment on the bottom there just like that. And if you squint your eyes again, you can check the tone and see if you like it or not. And I think it needs to be a little bit darker, so we're going to drop some more on the top here and just let it come down just like that. I mean a little bit, a little bit more color, what I'm saying. And then into there, you can just paint the rest of that. I'm actually going to go ahead and start painting it with this darker reddish brown kind of color here. I'm just mixing some leftovers on the palette that I have to get this tone 
a little bit more neutral gray into it to make it darker. I know you can't see what I'm doing here, but it's uh, there. Uh, all right, so I'm going to start probably up here would be a good idea. Start a little bit higher on this roof line here. So we want to be darker than that background. That way your barn shows up. But either way, it's going to show up. And I'm going to leave just a little white highlight on the edge of that roof line. And I'm going to go ahead and paint all that in just like that there. And this is kind of difficult doing it that way. I've got a little bit of a... Oh, whoop, shoot. Picking up some green here. I'm going to take care of that right away. That way I don't have to extend my, my uh, clouds into here too much. Just work on it there. Yeah, pick it up like that. There. And you work on it. It's not a big deal. You could just you can always just put in more trees and put some birds in there too if you wanted to. You'll notice I got a lot of birds in my paintings lately. I gotta be more careful, I guess. There, I'm just gonna leave that for now. I'm keep painting this barn here like that before this dries too much. It dried pretty quick here. Another hot day. And what are we gonna do? Right to the stone foundation. Yeah, I'm picking up I got pigment on my hand here, and that's what I think got me into trouble in the first place. And yeah, I can just go right across. Right to the front here like that. I just don't want that to bleed into that front area. Change the tone of that a little bit more reddish color. Just like that there and come across to my roof. Again, leave a little bit of white showing right on the edge of the roof if you can. If not, you can fix it. You can put a little gouache on it if it does need it at all at the end. Dry nut, brush is dry nut. Reload. And I'll get across like this here. A little bit too dry what I'm putting on there. It's nicer to be more wet, more water. More pigment like that. And then I'm going to darken it up even more. Just put some neutral gray right over top of this. And you can make your little bands. It doesn't have to be dark everywhere. You just make your little highlights. It's got a little bit of a dark band there in the photograph that I can see it. And this part here is darker than the rest. Go ahead and paint that in like that. And tie that in a little bit. And there, like that. Little window there, another one here, that post there, they can be dark later. And I'm just going to do my shady part of the roof overhang here a little bit, like that. And in the front, I do have a little bit, make sure that I hand is dry before I do this here and there. And just let that come down like a nice shadow into there. So the front was still wet so that's what let me do that. And quite dark. I'm going to get some thick neutral gray right for the corner here and I'm going to just drop that in. So you got thick pigment, less likely to move. I'm going to paint these in here now. And I got this window over here. I have to go really dark so it shows up. And or down here too. Let's see what else we got. We got a little bit of dark business going on there. And then along this line here, it's quite dark where this transition is. So I'm going to go ahead and paint that like that. And I'm thinking about foundation now. I'm just going to paint that. Just get some blue, some purpley blue here. Not that much purpley blue. And I should really wait till the uh, pigment above is dry so I'm purposefully not really touching into it yet and it's something that I can fix later on. So we got a little bit of darker areas here where the, but I can tell that's too wet. It's just going to bleed. 
and this is coming down here a little bit too far picked it up just like that there and I kind of like the way that roof is shining in there in the light so that's good there and uh, now we're just going to work on the hay bales in behind here all right so painting these hay bales behind the barn here we're going to leave our highlights the way they are and because there's a little bit of blue there that we uh, had painted before and so I'm just going to look at this normally I'd be painting over that side but you wouldn't be able to see a thing so I'm painting from this side here and just make sure I see a drop of water there make sure you pick up that uh, water or else it's just going to spread your pigment everywhere you don't want it so we're going to start right here and really the end one I carefully do that one there in the right shape and it blends down into here like that and I'm going to do this other one here and I'll leave a highlight along the right side of it here and we've got just a little dark band in between some of these here I'll go ahead and paint them in like that there and this one's here I'm going to do the bottoms and uh, we got some over here so we got the ants to do again leaving the highlight on the top side of them a little bit there like that there and I'm going to pick up some burgundy yellow ochre and I'm going to drop it in to these colors here these darks just so they read a little bit more like hay bales with the color that we're putting in here like that and a little bit there and carefully leaving the highlights in there and yeah, in between and you really get a sand back to see if they look like what you wanted but they they're looking pretty good I've got a little bit more blue into here make some little details and that's about all you gotta do there's some square things over here I'm gonna call them square bales and paint those in too like that and you don't have to be too fussy about what you're painting over here there is a piece of farm equipment I think or something like that uh, over here I'm gonna drop in a little bit of orange a little bit more over here and it'll tie everything in just like that. So now that this is dry, I can change the tone of that a little bit at the bottom. I'm just going to add some blue there, just like that, to make our foundation. Just one little stroke like that. And quickly, we're getting to the end of this painting. Um, almost done here. We just got to do our little details where the, the doors are. It's still showing. It's still actually pretty wet right there. Um, and uh, so I'm going to pause on that a little bit put a little detail in there this window you can reinforce things as things dry you can watch my video on watercolor timing uh, you'll know when you can drop in these this pigment and these details and not have it disperse and go everywhere on you you can go darker in your little soffit areas here under the the roof overhang now that it's this dry here you see that little white highlight I had left there before is kind of gone, but I can I can get it back with some gouache if I want. And it's just because it's blended on the paper. And this little white here, I don't like that, so I'm just going to add the little green I still had left over there. And it's looking pretty darn good. Well, thanks for watching this demo. I really appreciate it. Appreciate all the new subscribers and existing subscribers. You guys are great. And uh, send me copies of your paintings that you do. Be, I'd love to see them. And uh, leave a comment. Please subscribe. And, uh, oh, if you need some art supplies, I've got uh, uh, affiliate links uh, uh, in the description as well to Opus Art Supplies, uh, Jackson's, and uh, uh, Dick Blick Art Materials in the U.S. Uh, we'll talk to you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.